In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this spiral animation that you can use on its own or as a transition using just one layer, no plugins, and not even any effects. Okay, so there's actually two layers, but one layer is just a background layer, and I don't really count that because it's not really necessary at all. And this background layer is just a solid that I've applied a gradient ramp to and then a vignette to as well, just to make it look a little bit pretty. And you can download this project file for free down in the description. So let's delete our spiral layer and start from scratch. Let's grab our pen tool up here, and I'm gonna draw a line horizontally across our composition. So I'm going to hold shift, click, and while I keep holding shift, Click again on the other side. Now I'm gonna scroll out and extend this line a touch beyond our composition window. And now I'm gonna open my align tools and just align it to the very center there. And of course, let's name this spiral because we always label our layers and let's increase its stroke width so we can see it a little bit clearer. And let's change its color to a pink there. I wanna zoom in a little bit more. Great, now let's turn our line into a spiral. And we can do that by toggling down our shape layers properties. Let's go into its contents and we want to select add and then choose twist. Now at the moment it's starting off as a slight wave, but if we open up the twist properties and increase the angle, we can see that it starts to get very, very spirally. And you can increase this as high as you want for your preferred sort of spiral density. I think around 900 is good for this effect. And let's not change any of its center properties because when we do that, uh, funny things start to happen. So let's leave those at zero. And first let's animate the spiral coming out of the center. So to do that, we need to add a trim path, which we do by selecting add and selecting trim paths. And trim paths is pretty much used for drawing on a shape, drawing on a stroke. And at the moment, our spiral is completely visible, which is where we want it to end up. So let's keyframe that at maybe two seconds in. Let's toggle down trim paths. And we want to keyframe start and end. I'm gonna move this up so we have a bit more room. We're gonna have a lot of panels down here. And then let's go to one second in where we want our animation to start. And let's take our end from 100 down to 50% and our start from zero up to 50%. So it starts to draw our line from 50% of the way in the middle of our path and then draws outwards towards the end. Let's slow that down a bit. Now, if I quickly just scale down this spiral, you can see that this is still just our straight line from the beginning and it's drawing from the inside to the outside edges, but it's just really twisted in the middle, which creates a spiral. Now, if you only want to use one arm of this spiral, you can leave either the start or the end at 50%, and we can just delete the back keyframe. And now it only animates one side coming from the middle outwards. But I like two arms of our spiral, so I'm gonna leave that there, and let's scale this back up. And next we need to change the ends of our paths here. They're looking too square, and that doesn't look great. We want them nice and pointy. So let's open up our shape properties again. I'm gonna open up shape one, stroke one, and this is the perfect place to adjust the taper of our stroke. Now this is a new feature in one of the more recent After Effects CC 2020 updates. So if you haven't got this option available, you might need to upgrade your After Effects. Now when we open up taper, we have got a lot of options here, but we are only interested in the start length and the end length. Let's scrub to a frame where we can see our ends clearly. And if we increase the start length percent, we can see it starts to get pointy. And we can increase that all the way. So it's pointy 100% of the way through the stroke. We only needed, I think, around 25% for each end. So I'm gonna change the start length and the end length to 25. Great, now our spiral's getting there. The next thing to do is animate the width of the spiral. And we can do that with the stroke width property here by just animating this up and down. So we want it to be super skinny at the start. So let's make this zero. And at the very end, we want to move this up as much as we can. And we want to essentially cover the whole composition window. Now at 250, we're covering up 90% of our screen. And we've got these few slithers where the background is still visible. But to cover those up, we're gonna to have to increase our width a lot. Even here, we've still got some on the edges at 300. We need to go to almost 400 to get rid of those. And that's gonna to be too much. If we keyframe the stroke width here, and oh, it doesn't look like I keyframed it earlier at zero. Let's take that down to zero. Now our spiral's getting thicker, but it gets thick way too fast. And then you barely see that it's a spiral towards the end here. So we wanna change that down to 250-ish. And only the outside of the spiral is showing through the background because we tapered those strokes. So these strokes are thinner at the edge here, which is why they're not covered up by the increased stroke width. So to fix that, we're gonna animate the tapered stroke lengths as well. So let's keyframe the start length and end length at 25 at the start of our animation, which is at one second. And then later, let's decrease those, take those back down to zero. There, our animation is almost filled up. I can see there's a little bit left in the corner. And what that is, is because our line isn't long enough. So I'm just going to go and extend our line 
a little bit more. That's revealing some tiny gaps in our spiral. So let's just increase our stroke width a little bit. We want it just enough so it covers the whole screen. There we are, 255. And it looks like these keyframes are a bit too early. Let's move them back as well. So all our end keyframes are lined up. And here's what our spiral looks like now. Excellent, we're getting very close. This video is sponsored by Motion Elements. Motion Elements is a creative marketplace for video creators with an amazing unlimited subscription plan. That means you can download whatever you want from their subscription catalog. They have over 3 million pieces of content. Stock videos, images, music, sound effects, After Effects templates, 3D models, lotty animations, footage of chihuahuas. It's so much, you'll drop your cups. If you need something to spice up your motion graphics projects, well, they've got it. Amazing VFX elements, film burn overlays, color grading presets, hand-drawn scribble packs, even a total VHS effects toolkit. All things that you can use to save yourself time and money for when you've got projects with tight deadlines and you don't have the resources to create those all yourself. But what about licensing? Friend, don't even worry. There are no additional licensing fees. You can use anything from motion elements in unlimited projects forever. They are safe for commercial use in all media worldwide. With an annual plan, it's only $16.50 a month. Sign up with the link in the description. Another thing we can add to this animation to give it a bit more flavor is some rotation. So I'm gonna open up to rotation properties with R on my keyboard, keyframe it at zero. And then at the end of our animation, let's keyframe it at minus 360 degrees or minus one full rotation. So now it's gonna spin as the spiral draws on. Excellent. Let's bring up our other properties with U on our keyboard to bring up just the other keyframes. And that is all the keyframes we're gonna need. And one thing this does need is some easing. So I'm gonna select all of these keyframes, press F9 to give them an easy ease. There we are. Let's actually go into our graph editor and in the speed graph, I'm gonna select them all and just increase the easing a little bit. I think around 50% will be good for us. There, I think that's looking great. And this is why I left this till the end so I can ease them all at once. And if you want to use this spiral as a transition, that's all you need to do. We can just grab our footage, place it underneath our spiral layer, change the track mat to alpha mat. And now we've got a nice spiral transition. And if I'm gonna be honest, this transition is a little bit um, let's say flavorful. So I'd suggest maybe using this sparingly. Maybe use it as often as you would a star wipe. Let's get rid of that footage and let's work on those lighting effects. Now all of those are done with layer styles with no effects. So to add those, we need to right click our layer, go to layer styles. And the first one we're gonna add is inner shadow. If we zoom in, we can see this adds a slight shadow coming from the top left. And that's added to our layer styles down here. So let's open up inner shadow and we're gonna change a few things. First, let's change its color to white because I'm actually gonna use this as a highlight, not as a shadow. Let's change its blend mode from multiply to normal so we can actually see it. Let's increase its opacity to 100%. Let's move its angle so it's on the bottom left at minus 60-ish. Looks to be good. So we've got a light source coming up from the bottom right, which kind of matches our background. Let's increase the distance to 15 so more of it's visible. And let's adjust the size as well, which is like the softness. And let's increase that to, we don't need to go too far. Maybe 15 as well for this. There, now I've got a nice highlight coming from the bottom right. And we've got one more layer style to add. So let's right click our spiral. Again, choose layer styles and then choose bevel and emboss. Let's open up those properties again. And bevel emboss is kind of good because it adds a highlight to the top left and a shadow to the bottom right. So we get a highlight and a shadow in one effect. Now let's increase its size from five up to 75. Let's zoom out a touch as well. And now you can see we get an interesting effect because now we've added our bevel and emboss. The shadow side is set to multiply and that's multiplying over our highlight that we added before using the inner shadow. And that original highlight is showing through so we get a nice little bit of rim lighting here. So let's change our shadow color from black to, to something like a purple. And now we can get some really interesting lighting happening. We could even change this color and go really wild and get some really interesting psychedelic colors as well. But I think purple works best here. And we can even change our original stroke color of our original line layer. And because all of those layer styles are stacked on top, we can just change that original color and all of that shading will be applied on top. We can even go really dark like black. Okay, this look like a sort of plastic tube, but I think our original color works. And here's how that looks animated. All those layer styles kind of fade away at the end because they are only affecting sort of the alpha channel of the, the total layer. And I find that look really interesting. Now for another neat variation, you could take our original line. Let's actually open this and toggle it up so we can see our original line is called shape one. We could duplicate that layer with control plus D and then we can rotate that layer and we get a second pair of arms coming out of our spiral. It looks like it's not quite aligned with our center though. So let's see if we can 
nudge it so it's aligned. There we are. Now we have four arms of our spiral coming out. And this does fill up a lot faster, so you might need to adjust your stroke widths here. But let's hide shape two, because I think two arms works best for our spiral. Using layer styles like this is a really useful and effective way to get some really neat and interesting effects, especially with lighting. And we haven't even touched any effects. This is all within the shape layer. So please go ahead and download this project file for free. It's down in the description so you can take a closer look, tinker with some stuff, and I'd love to see how you take these techniques and apply them to your own work. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.